What's going on, guys? Tyson Anderson, Mr. Hammerdown. Listen, guys, I wanted to dive right into this thing and talk about a segment of something that I, I always danced around but never got a chance to really uh, expound upon, and that is identifying the workhorse in the bunch. And that is the perspective of picking out that bold, that colossal Thor Hercules type of dog out of or from amongst the others in that in that litter, right? And and let's just dive into it. It's always going to be that one, that two, sometimes three, you know, in a litter that's just going to stick out like a sore thumb. They're going to be those ones that's profound and prolific and exceptional on all levels, right? And uh, if you're lucky, you have a, a large litter of, uh, or a large number of the litter, that the majority of the litter is like that. But in most cases, that doesn't always happen uh, to be the uh, end result. So there's no right or wrong answer to this, in, in my opinion, in, in my basic little studies and uh, handfuls of litters and experience, experiences, excuse me, I'm tongue tied this morning, with uh, those litters, I can honestly say that what has worked for me is I've always, one, allowed the dogs or the puppies before they become those grown dogs to identify themselves, to identify themselves. Now, what do you mean by that, Anderson? I mean, you let that wheat and tear grow together. And in time, those dogs, the cream will rise to the top. And uh, forgive me if you hear those puppies. Those are some uh, young pup uh, drothars. We're in uh, Wyoming right now. Uh, just left Diamondville and uh, transporting right now. So I'm on the road. And I figured I'd just go and do this segment. So, yeah, guys, uh, let those dogs identify themselves. That's the first thing. And... You know, of course, everybody says the same thing. Oh, the fireworks and, you know, this and that and, you know, uh, who's dominant over the food bowl. Absolutely. I agree 200%. I definitely would love to have that dominant one or two that's over that food bowl. I, I want to see the ones that's always wanting my attention, that's always clinging to me so ever uh, close you know, every time I come out there to the kennel, I want to, want to see the ones that's on the fence that's biting the wire, that's just uh, just so amped up and so eagerly uh, intense to come out and show me uh, its, it's new spin around trick, its new uh, puncture the, the the water bottle, the tear the, the pup uh, the uh, uh, puppet or the toy apart. You know, I want to see that. I want to see that zeal. I want to see that tenacity in that low part of that learning curve. I want to see that. And that dog, believe it or not, will always, always, usually end up being the one or the two that is of, or three, whatever, is that is of that bunch. And, and I was saying this to a buddy of mine earlier, just because a dog ends up showing that it's the workhorse, doesn't always mean that that's going to be the exceptional one of the litter. It just gives you, in my opinion, solely my opinion, guys, don't shoot. It, it, it just gives you a better chance and a higher probability in deeming who and who is not the exceptional ones. For instance, let me put this into perspective. Okay, so in speaking with my good friend and who I would look to as, or who I glean to as a, a type of mentor, right? Uh, Mr. John Otruba with the Woodstock Grampy Dogs. You know, he told me, he said, Tyson, those dogs, people don't know, those dogs weren't exactly where I wanted them to be, or at least I didn't want to put my stamp of approval on them until they got anywhere from four to five years old. And there were even times, listen to this, where I didn't deem them exactly where I wanted them to be until they were six years old. And I thought, thought, wow, really? Because there's a lag with the pure Grampy dogs. There's a lag with the pure Town Line Johnny Paycheck dogs. There's a lag with the pure Taylor Socket to me dogs. And if you aren't aware of this, if you aren't familiar with this, 
you won't know about that lag. What is a lag? That huge ceiling fan or that huge industrial fan that you're trying to get to turn on because it's hot inside of a warehouse and you cut it on and you think it's just going to immediately pump out cool air. But instead, the reality is, turn the switch on, boo, and it's not even spinning yet. It's just barely starting to move. Well, that's the same thing like that Carnival cruise ship I talked about in a, another segment, trying to turn. It's going to turn slowly, but it's turning. You can't even feel the turn if the driver or, or the captain is a great driver. But a 10-foot or a 12-foot uh, John boat, you can feel that turn immediately. Okay? Well, the same thing, you know, exists and can be deemed applicable when it comes to that of these type of lines. I'm giving you an example not because they're of the lines that I run. I'm giving you an example because they can happen at any given time in any line of dogs. But some lines or uh, other lines are more, more prone to uh, having that type of lag because that is a familiar characteristic and a uh, very traceable trait that comes along with that certain bloodline or genre of line of dogs, right? And uh, I think that's so important that we know that and that we go back beyond, beyond, beyond what we see in the physical and we go to what we can't see and what we could not see that was before us, which is the yesteryear hounds, the yesteryear gazettes, the yesteryear dogmen and houndsmen that were there, that had that visual prop in their mind of that time stamp, that, what, that, that, that moment in time that elapsed in, in, in the fog density of their membrane, right? What happened 30 years ago? What had happened 50 years ago? What took place 60 years ago? They still have those memories. And that's what you have to deem, you know, true or false and, and, and gather the information in your basic assessment. That's just in the preliminary of the assessment. And while you're assessing, keep all of those things in the mind and say, okay, well, this dog was known for this. This dog was known for shyness. This dog was... So if you start to see those traits, you know you're on the right path. And I don't mean the right path as far as those things are right, but you're on the right path that you're getting the traits of that line that were supposed to be given uh, or are supposed to be uh, uh, present even at the time of whatever that you're you know, fooling with the puppies that you have, okay? Um, I hope that makes sense. I know there was a lot, but uh, I want to back up a little bit. That boldness, that tenacity, that zeal that I was talking about, right? That, that the eagerness to to please. Most of my pups, what I do once, and, it, and I'll, I'll drop some links uh, to the previous ones in to the description, so make sure you guys pay attention to that. I'm going to drop about three or four in there. I think I've got at least three or four in there with um, Anderson's Briar Country, Jackie, Miss Sissy, and Anderson's Black Bart, uh, uh, Pete. Um, I showed a little bit of how I took those dogs to fields uh, numerous of times on, on numerous occasions. And I would turn those dogs loose and I would let people see those dogs work and I let them see me work. They weren't started, they weren't running or anything at all. And um, I did that because those are the basic fundamentals to assessing puppies and that is handling that's familiar uh, familiarizing yourself with those dogs and then with you which is another side of socialization which is very important a dog that has not been properly socialized can never hear me can never be assessed can never be properly observed and can never properly be analyzed to see or identify that workhorse trait. Why is that, Anderson? Because you have not given that dog the proper tools. You've set that dog up for failure instead of success. Any dog that comes prior or previous to that dog or those puppies, those dogs, in my eyes, this is just my opinion, again, doesn't mean anything. In my eyes, those dogs before those puppies that you have should be your puppy's floor 
those dogs prior should be, you know, their ceiling should be your dog's floor. It should, they should pick up where whomever before you left off with those yesteryear hounds. And if those pups don't come out to be at least at the floor level of those prior or previous hounds, and if you're not walking in the in the steps to pick up after that houndsman of yesteryear, then you know you're already off whack. Some people again aren't going to look at it as intense as I would. Why? Because they're not after it like like I am. They not they may not be as 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 active or a, avid, excuse me, as some of these more prominent names. And I won't go to name them, but uh, you can do your research that are out here that win national championships. I will name one or two of my buddies, like a Richard Sawyer. You know, uh, like a Joe Gamanchi, you know, um, you know, uh, of those different type of calibers of the, the late John Monkman's, you know, people of that caliber of your John O'Troopers, of your Will, uh, uh, your Lou uh, Warmoth, you know, of your Willet Randalls, you know, those type of people were at this thing very intense, even down to your Dexter Reffitts, you know, uh, down to your female Beaglers, Miss Vicky Bassett. I, I, I love the int intensity that she always displays, you know. Um, these people are avid about their dogs. They're not just out here to kill a rabbit. They're not just out here to grab a ribbon. They're avid about this thing. They're out here early morning, late evening. I'm doing the same exact thing, but I've got to put the time in. These guys have put in a little bit more time than me. You know, where I'm early 20-something years in it, they might have 30, 40, 50 years in it. But I'm saying all that to say this, you have also, in, in that place of, ident of, of identifying that workhorse, you have to identify the workhorse in you. Hear me. You have to register within yourself the workhorse within yourself. Because if you don't recognize the workhorse in you, you'll never identify the workhorse outside of you, that you the, the, the you that you have created to be an extended arm of your mind, of your ingenious, right? Those litters are only an extended arm of who you are, of those calculated and precise, uh, uh, precise uh, 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 equations that you have went before, you know, yourself hours, countless days on end, at least I do, to see what you can do to better last year's dogs, to better 10 years ago's dogs, and so forth and so forth, those workhorses of the, of the, of the past and to press toward those workhorses of the future. So, you know, in saying all of that, um, I, I like, again, to take those dogs to the field. I'm all over the place. This is past that you guys hear, and I'm uh, straight off the top of my head. Um, I like to take those dogs to the field, and I like to present them, them those dogs obstacles, what I like to call obstacles, preliminary obstacles, right, in these basic stages of, of, of just getting to know the dog, socializing the dog, familiarizing myself with the dog, uh, understanding handling this before, again, starting the dog on a rabbit, ever putting a collar on them, all of these things. Take them to a field. Hopefully there's a little bit of, you know, briars in there. Not, nothing too much. You're not trying to kill them. You know, they're, they're just pups. Eight to ten weeks old, 11 weeks old, whatever. And turn them loose. Whole litters. Seven, eight, nine of them. Turn them loose. It's you and the dogs. They're in the middle of a, of a, of a field. If you've done your due diligence in the whelping pen and you talk to them, pop, 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 those high-pitched noises, which is a proven fact that dogs relate to that, excuse me, just like that pillow talk of that of a baby, hey, they respond to that, okay? Try it. They, they do respond. Even older dogs, they respond, all right? Um, you should have some kind of feel around on those dogs when, when it comes to you letting them go. And when you let them go right there in the middle of a field, I can give you a prime example, like my black bark dog, Pete. He was one that out of all of those dogs, he, he had to be where I was at. He had to be where I was at. If I had to say a second one, I would say Robin, the one that, I, that my buddy, uh, she went to Louisiana, Central Louisiana, Rufus's Showtime Robin. She's another one that had to be where I was at, had to be. Anderson's Bye Bye Chief, not so much. He didn't really care to be all the time up underneath me, but he, he, was, he wanted to be in the mix with his brothers and sisters, you know. He didn't want to be left behind, but I can always tell oh, he's going to be a nice dog. We, and I like the way his energy is and so forth and so forth. But that Pete, 
He was always right there. I could take off running wide open and that dog would break his back. I mean, he would kill himself trying to get to me. Didn't matter how thick, didn't matter how thin, he was there. He wanted to be there. If I went through it, he had to go through it. If I, if I went over it, he wouldn't go over it. He, there wasn't any going around. And I would take a, a 10 foot check cord and tie it to his little neck around his collar and he would sometimes get it tangled up on, on small limbs and he would get so frustrated he would bite the ground throw the dirt up in the air throw the, throw the little things up in the air and he would pull himself backwards and he would drive like a like a mushing dog sled dog and he would break those small infant twigs he would he would he would break those 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 uh, very fragile twigs and little limbs I'm telling you, as a puppy, and he would try his best to get to me. And I would love that. And I said, man, this dog's going to be something special. I seen special to all of them. But there was something that much more special than, in, than, than the rest in him. He began to do, like I said, and separate himself. He began to, and I don't even want to say sanctify, but that's what it means, set apart. He, he began to set himself apart from the, rather, from the others. And I knew then that was the one I put the in, emphasis on. And upon you identifying what they have already identified, you place emphasis on that. And at that moment, you begin to work that dog differently. People say, how do you get those dogs to handle so well? How do they do? I don't have to put a collar on them. I only put a collar on them because once we get into hunting, they get to jumping that second, third rabbit. They really don't want to quit. They're not, they won't run deer. They load up. They, their kennel broke. Their house broke. I mean, I can take these dogs to the house. And oftentimes I do. You know, uh, just to familiarize them, and, it's, and I, it gives me an edge in the field on those wild, crazy maniacs. Some people think that's a little, little extreme. I love my dogs. I love my dogs. There's nothing, no doubt about it. Right after God, my family is my dogs. Period. Not cars, cl clothes, cash. No. My belief, my family, my dogs. Just like that. And. Uh, so I would say take that and run with it to the junior handler out there that's having a hard time trying to figure out what's what, trying to find your way. Take your time, sir. Take your time, ma'am. Slow down. Slow down. Register within yourself who you are, what you are, the caliber of person you are, and find the dog that better best it's your persona, your mannerisms, and you will find yourself, I'm telling you, flawless in the success department. If you're a, a, a you know, slothful, lackadaisical, laid back type of person, and you have maniac, hard driving, intense dogs, nine times out of ten, that doesn't work. You need something that's usually going to mirror what you are, and that usually works. So if I had to give any advice, and not that it means anything, I would say find the dog or line of dogs that best fits you. Register within yourself, register with those dogs, and put the work in. And once those dogs start identifying themselves, there are levels to that identifying process. There are times where you're going to find tooth comb and you're going to go over and find tooth comb again. You're going to find tooth comb again. It's almost like cleaning out chitterlings or in the country chitlins. They take the ER and all of the other things out. They don't worry about pronunciation. And if they're grammatically correct, they just chit chitlins. But as you're cleaning chitterlings, there's time and time again you have to constantly go over them and comb them to get all of that gunk and everything out of there so that you eat a clean bite a satisfying bite right and I say do the same with those puppies as those dogs start to weed themselves out and show you the difference show that show you that boldness show you that bigger nose show you that more prone to grab that chick to, to get in there and do what the other puppies won't do and jump that rabbit and those hard jumps cold days hot days hey put the emphasis on that dog I'm not gonna say forget about the rest but distribute wisely your efforts and your energies hear me distribute wisely your efforts and your energies amongst those other dogs and place the emphasis place those emphasis on and upon the backs of 
on the back, excuse me, of that exceptional dog that's already starting to weed itself out and show itself different on so many different levels than the rest. That's all I got for you guys. And once that workhorse shows you it's a workhorse, you work that workhorse. You work that workhorse. Don't overdo it. It can be done. You can scramble the eggs of any dog, and that's that's getting that dog out of pocket mentally. Take your time, slow down, and really apply yourself. I've seen so many young guys, I'm gonna let you guys go. I've seen so, because I can really go on there. I've seen so many young guys and women find something good, and I'm t telling you, they have, they'll take it to the extreme. Slow down and take your time. Let that dog be a puppy before it come, becomes a grown dog. Let it experience those adolescence, uh, th those adolescence moments. Uh, you know, let that dog go about that developmental curve the way that it should. Do not rush it. It will come. It will come. It will come into its own. If it doesn't, you know what you do. If, and but again, line it up with the bloodline that you're running. And if that is what the bloodline that you're running does is three year, four year lag before they come into their own, don't wait at a year and a half or two years old and say, you know what, I've done enough. It's not showing me anything. It's got to go. Well, it can't just go because that's not the infrastructure of the line that you're running. If the infrastructure of the line and the standard of the line that you're running is saying three to four years, give that dog those three or four years to see if it starts to pivot out of that lag and increase momentum. Okay? Until next time, guys, Tyson Anderson, Mr. Hammerdown, I'll see you when I get back out on the East Coast and into the woods. Almost forgot, guys. If you haven't already, smash that subscribe button and make sure you turn that notification bell on so that you are notified every time we upload a video. There are so many more to come, so much more content I have that I want to share with you guys in the off season. I promise you we will not bore you guys. We will always show you the good, bad, and the ugly. I won't always or just show you the cream of the crop and the hammering down days. I'm not going to show you that. I'm going to show you all of it. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Get on board with the real channel that shows you all of that. Stick with us as we stick with you guys, and you will not be disappointed. Thanks again.